we give you all a warm welcome to our drive-in. We do want to apologise for uh, the very late uh, change of venue. Um, there was another uh, another thing on at the, the football club car park, and they had hoped to be all out by five o'clock, allowing us in after that. But uh, something happened; it was all delayed, and I think it was still. The car park was still filled there just uh, at five so uh, we took that late decision but thankfully you've got the message and uh, great to have you here and well for those online watching we welcome you as well obviously it hasn't affected you um, uh, with change of venue uh, but still we, we, we thank the Lord that we're able to be uh, able to meet here this evening you're all very welcome I know many people are away at this time many people are even having to isolate because of the COVID situation there are those who are unwell as well but great to see the car park filled and uh, we're delighted to have you all here this evening and we're delighted also to have our speaker this evening Colin Cooper uh, Colin from uh, Dungannon uh, that's where he's currently living um, we'll find out a little bit more this evening his background where he's originally from and all and uh, just what uh, the Lord how the Lord has been working in his life saving him and helping him and uh, he'll be sharing with us so Colin you're very welcome and we're delighted to have you and thank you so much uh, for coming uh, this evening I'm going to pray uh, and then uh, the group are going to sing again again we thank them for their ministry and song and I know you will have been blessed as we've been listening to them uh, this evening they'll minister again in song to us and then following that Colin will come and share words of testimony now with us this evening. So let's all pray and commit our time to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you for your blessings of this day already. We come, our Father, to thank you for all your goodness towards us and for all your help. And we want to thank you, Father, for this opportunity to meet together in this fashion this evening. We know we have a change of venue, but Lord, we thank you that you're uh, still able to speak uh, Lord, and we do pray that that is what we'll, uh, we will experience this evening. We'll hear the voice of God speaking through your servant. And we come, our Father, to thank you for bringing Colin amongst us and pray your blessing upon him as he share, uh, will share words of testimony. We ask, our Father, that you will take each word and use it to speak into hearts and lives, not just those, our Father, here in the car park, those who are watching online as well. We pray, Father, that we all would hear the voice of God speaking so clearly this evening. We thank you that we're still in the day of salvation. And, Father, we come to pray this evening that there'll be those, Lord, who Lord, not only would see their need of salvation, but would, they would see the Saviour who invites them to come this evening, the Saviour who is able to completely save them, our Father, from all of their sin, give unto them eternal life, and that there'll be true repentance within hearts our father this evening we do pray that you'll continue to bless the group as well as they lead us in our worship we thank you lord for them we thank you uh, indeed for the, the the ministry of song and thank you father for the effectiveness of it the blessing that it is as well that not only does our father it glorify you but indeed our father it blesses us within our souls as we consider the words uh, that are that are being sung here this evening so father we just commend our time to you thanking you again for the lord jesus christ and thank you this evening that lord that he is the one who reigns over all and that he's the one who gave us life for all upon the cross of calvary and that all who come to him or god in repentance will receive the great gift of eternal life so father bless our time this evening and exalt your name amongst us and we pray it all in our saviour's precious name amen Streams of abundance flow, blessed be your name. 
Good evening. It's good to be with you. Thanks for the invitation and to be along tonight. I want to read just a, a couple of verses from Romans 8 as, as we begin. And then I want to share just something of, of God's work in my life. And I'm going to do it in, in a way where sort of seven lessons that I have learned um, throughout my life um, this far. I'm sure there's more lessons um, to come in the future. Um, but let, let me read um, Romans 8, um, verse 34 to 49. We read there, Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of God in Christ, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, verse 37, no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Salvation is by simple faith in Jesus Christ alone. He, he alone is Saviour. And it's God is the one who, who gives us and keeps us. And my prayer tonight is I share something of, of the story of God's work in my life, of what it is to, to, to be saved by the grace of God, that if you tonight you're listening and you don't know Christ as Saviour, that you would put your trust in Jesus Christ. As I said, I, I want to share really seven lessons that I, I've learned throughout my life. And the first lesson that I want to share with you is this, that when it comes to salvation, we need to be ready right now. I think back to when I was 10 years old, I've been brought up in a Christian home and I've been brought up in a Christian home. My parents have taught me right from, as long as I can remember, that I needed to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior myself. I've been brought to church, I've been brought to Sunday school, I've been, been taught the Word of God, and they, they, they taught me and reminded me that the fact that I had Christian parents, the fact that I went to church, the fact that um, I, I read my Bible and was read stories from, from childhood, that was not enough. That did not make me a Christian. That I needed to trust in Jesus as myself, for myself. And at 10 years old, I remember very, very simply praying a simple prayer and asking the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive my sin. At that time, I, I was struggling. There was a lot of worries in my mind about death. And I remember going to bed at night and terrified that if I close my eyes at night, that I might not wake up in the morning. And, and, and that, that fear of death was overwhelming at the time. And, and that was, I suppose, part of the reason that I, I came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I say that, of course, the other part of it was just the, the, the teaching and the mum and dad just coming alongside and just pointing me to Jesus as Savior and telling me, you need Jesus in your life. They used to say to me that for the Christian, death was not the end. It was only the beginning of life forever in heaven with God. And at 10 years old, I trusted Jesus Christ as Savior. I give my life to him. I say the first lesson that as I reflect back on my life that I want to share with you tonight is that that you need to do the same. You need to be ready now. None of us know what the future holds. None of us know what another day will bring. You need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ now. The second lesson that I want to share with you from my life is this, that as a Christian, we need to surround ourselves with the Word of God and the right people that 
we may grow as a Christian. See, when the Bible talks about salvation, it's not about just simply trusting in Jesus Christ and praying a prayer sometime in the past and then forgetting about it all. No, it's about, about growing in God, growing in our knowledge of Jesus, growing in our knowledge of the Word of God, and becoming more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And that involves, I say, surrounding ourselves with the Word of God and surrounding ourselves with the right people. That means getting involved in, in a really good church. Getting involved in a church that teaches the Bible, teaches the Word of God. And as I look back, I was, um, when I lived in, in Balagali, um, my dad was a farmer. My, my whole background was farming background. I, I, I farmed for, for many years and we went to the, the local Presbyterian church at the time in Balagali. And there the, I, I was taught the Word of God, the godly ministers who, who preached the gospel and who, who taught what it is to live as God would have us live. I got involved also in, in CEF work in, in um, SU at school at that stage and um, later on um, in CU at university, the whole way through just getting people around me that taught and encouraged me in the word of God, Christian friends who, who surrounded me, who, who, who I could be accountable to. And looking back over my life, those teenage years, you see, God used those people, God used his word through those people to to grow me as a Christian. And here tonight, perhaps even a young person here tonight, I, I say to you, surround yourself with the right people that will encourage you in the Word of God. Get involved in the local church. Get involved in, in Christian service. That is where you grow. One of those people that really encouraged me, one of those people that I, I met at school that um, was a real blessing in my life, was uh, a girl called Suzanne. Um, I, I met her when I was 17 years old. Uh, I went to the Royal School in Dungannon. She went to the high school in Dungannon um, in our lower sixth year. Those two schools are amalgamated. And um, I met her for the first time. And a few months after I met her, um, I, I'm gonna say I plucked up the courage to ask her out. That, that would be true, except it wasn't true. Um, I actually put up the courage to ask her best friend, would she go out with me? Um, because I was too scared of asking Suzanne in case she said no. So her friend asked for me, and then Suzanne said yes. So then I went and asked her after that. So I knew that she definitely would say yes to me. And I have had one girlfriend in my life, um, and then I went on and I married her. Um, so I met, met Suzanne at a school, and it's a huge blessing in my life. Um, we are married um, 29 years ago and I, I praise God just for, for the, the blessing of of having a, a Christian wife to, to encourage me and to be there with me. Say so we just surround ourselves with, with the right people. And again I, I say to you if you're a young person, you know, get the, the right people around you, particularly when it comes to um, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, make sure you're someone who, who loves the Lord, who will encourage you in the things of God. And as you surround yourself with, with the Word of God and the right people, what God does, He, he takes and he, he, he grows you as a Christian, and He guides you and He leads you. As, as I said, I, I, I was a farmer. I used to farm. Um, my, say, my dad was a farmer. My grandfather was a farmer. My great-grandfather were farmers. My great-great-grandfather were farmers. A whole line of farming um, right behind me. And I did agriculture after I left school, went to Queen's, did three years of agriculture, and then I came home to the farm. And I farmed until I was um, almost um, 30 years old. And around that time, I believe God had been guiding me for, for many years. I actually think probably for about eight years before that, God had been stirring my heart by going into full-time Christian service. And I remember just as Dad retired, he was 65, and he said to me, he says, Colin, you've got to make a decision here. Either, either you farm or else you go into full-time Christian ministry. You, you can't keep doing what you're doing. You can't keep doing both. I was, was very involved. I was, doing, I was preaching. I was involved in the youth work in the church. I was involved in, in CEF and um, camps and other things and, and many, many things. And Dad said, you can't keep doing both. And it was at that moment I, I said to him, well, you know what? You know, I, I really think that God is calling me into full-time Christian ministry. And we, we, we talked it over. I talked over obviously with Suzanne as well, and we, we prayed about it. And, and 
as we read the word of God, I took advice from, from godly people around me. I, I believe that God was guiding me and leading me in that direction. And I, I started in the Irish Baptist College in 2000, September 2000. At that time, we sold out all of the cows. We had a pedigree um, dairy herd. Um, we, we, we sold probably short of, of 200 um, cows in September um, 2000. I always say when I was called to the Baptist College, my dad was also called because he had to give up a farm as well. And I, I praise God how he, he led and guided. I remember just a couple, about a year ago, somebody said to me, says, how could you possibly do that? How could you possibly give up, up the farm? This, this guy was a part-time farmer. And I, I said to him, I said, you know what? It didn't seem like a big deal at the time. It, it seemed like nothing. In fact, not to do it felt wrong. It didn't feel even like, like any sort of sacrifice at all because God had led and guided me and brought me to that place. See, God guides and God leads and God directs. My, my view of guidance is very, very simple. You surround yourself with the word of God and godly people and you, you keep walking. The picture I have in my head, walking hand in hand with God as my father. And you, you keep walking with him and he guides and leads. So the, the second lesson that I want to leave with tonight is that, that we need to, to grow by surrounding ourselves with the word of God and godly people. That's number three I want to leave with you. Is that an eternal perspective in life is essential. Especially when it comes to suffering. I said at the start, we need to be ready for salvation. We, we need to be ready for, for heaven. We, 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 need, we can't put it off. And who knows what another day brings. And eight years ago, very, very suddenly, our, our lives as a family were turned upside down. God blessed us. Me and Suzanne with, with four beautiful boys. Our eldest boy, Matthew, passed away eight years ago. It was um, 20th of February 2013. And our whole world just fell apart. We, we, we could not make sense of anything. We couldn't understand what, what had happened, how it had happened. It, it just completely threw us. The, the, the pain, the, the, the devastation of it. I mean, I, I, I haven't got the words to describe the, the weight of it. I used to say that people would ask me how, how we were at the time. I used to say to them, you know, that the, the pain is unbearable. It's unbearable. And yet in the midst of that, that, that pain, there was a, a peace that, that God gave. And yet we could not understand it. None of it made sense. And I have to say, I mean, I, I still look back on it and I, I, I struggled, to, struggled to make sense of it. I remember the time, just a couple of weeks afterwards, in my front of the house, sitting on the front step, and at that time, just wrestling with what had happened, and my, my mind was in, in, in turmoil. There were, there were two thoughts in my head. One, one thought is that life is a big joke, and maybe there's no God at all. As I said, you've been brought up in a Christian home. I, I, I trusted Christ when I was 10 years old. I had um, been serving in, in the church. I, I, I knew my Bible really well, but at that moment, I was questioning everything. And then that, that thought was in my head, maybe there's no God. Maybe life's just one big, cruel joke. But alongside that thought, there was another one. And it was, God, if you're there, I need you more than I've ever needed you in my life. I, I, I can't do this without you. And I remember that time, and to me it wasn't the most spiritual moment in my life. But I look back on it now, I see the Holy Spirit of God at work in me through it. In that moment, I remember thinking to myself, if there's no God then everything is hopeless. If there's no God, then there is no Jesus. 
And if there's no Jesus, then there's no cross. If there's no cross, then there is no salvation. And if there's no salvation, then there is no heaven. And if there's no heaven, then there is absolutely nothing. There is nothing. There is no hope. It is absolutely hopeless. And in that moment, I remember standing up and I, I simply said to God, God, I, I don't feel anything. I'm so numb. All I feel is pain. But I believe you're, you're there. It was a statement of faith. But it's not salvation. Salvation is, is faith. Faith in Jesus Christ alone. And in that moment, I, I said, God, I, I, I trust you. I need you. I can't do this without you. In those days, I, I found it really hard to pray. I found it really hard to read my Bible. My, my prayer used to be, God, I, I, I can't get the words to pray, but other people are praying on my behalf. Hear their prayers instead of mine. I know they're praying for me. And I used to say it to God over and over again, day after day. What I used to do is, instead of reading, I couldn't read, and I used to just play the, the Psalms on my iPad over and over again. So I just Psalm 1, then Psalm 2, Psalm 3. And I used to that play it all night when I, when I couldn't sleep. And just for months on end. And I couldn't listen to music, couldn't listen to anything else, but I let, let the Psalms just play over and over again. I allow the Word of God to, to wash over me. My, as I reflect back on it now, that realization that I have not the answers to the sufferings of this world. I, I, I can't explain what happened in our family. But I have to look to eternity. I have to look to the future, knowing that the Lord Jesus Christ is Savior. He did die, he did rise again. He is Lord of all. Which brings me to the fourth lesson I've learned in my life is that the gospel is more important than anything else. We read earlier from verse um, 34 there in, in Romans 8, it talks about, about Jesus' death and then talks about his resurrection. Jesus' death matters. He had, he had to die because of, of my sin, because of your sin. He, he bore the punishment of our sin on the cross and he died to bring forgiveness. That great exchange took place. He took my sin and he gives me forgiveness. He took the wrath that was due for, to me and he gives me mercy. He took the hell that was due to me and he gives me heaven. He took the death that was due to me and he gives me eternal life. Life that goes on forever. And the assurance I have tonight is this. But because of the gospel, I will see my sin again. Because the gospel is faith in Christ alone. It is not by works. It is faith in Christ alone. And when, when God saves, he keeps us. So God saved me when I was 10 years old. God saved my, my son Matthew when he was five years old. And because of his work of salvation, because of that, that, that word of grace, I know, because of the gospel, that one day I will be in heaven today, um, one day, and I will see my son again. That is the absolute confidence that I have. The gospel is more important than anything else in all of this world. You see, when you look in, in the case of, of loss and pain and suffering I see nothing else matters I mean all, all the stuff that you have around you all, all the, the stuff you man, manage to gather up in your life and, and, and your, your house and your, your cars and, and everything else not that matters anymore all that matters is eternity the gospel is more important than anything else lesson that I have learned over the past number of years is that the resurrection is everything. As I said earlier, no resurrection means no hope. 
to speak of Jesus' death without speaking of the resurrection is, is to miss the, the gospel. And I, I actually think back over the years I've preached and, and on reflection, there are times I, I preached the gospel, like times I preached about Jesus' death and I never mentioned the resurrection. And I, I did people a disservice. I mean, how can we, we preach of Jesus' death without mentioning the fact that he, he rose again from the dead? If he did not rise, then we have no hope. If, he, if he's not alive today, then we don't have a living saviour to, to do a work in people's lives. But the fact that he did rise from the dead, the fact that he is alive today, we have a living saviour. We have one who is alive, one who is mighty and powerful and able to transform hearts and lives. One who is able to transform your hearts and your life. There's a, an old story, I'm sure maybe you've heard it before. But a story that's um, obviously made up story, but a story of a man walking down the road and he, he come to a junction in the road and there are a number of people standing around the junction of the road and he's asking them for, for advice. And so who you have, you've got Muhammad, you've got Buddha, you've got Abraham and you've Jesus. And the story goes is, and ask the question, who would you ask for advice? And the answer is very, very simple. You ask the one who is alive. You ask the one who's alive. And that, that's what makes Christianity unique. That's what makes it truth. Because we have one who, who died and rose again. And I haven't time tonight, but I, I, I could take you on a, on a journey through, through the Bible. I could take you on a journey even through history to point out that there are biblical statements, the, the, there are other manuscripts that are outside of the Bible that, that point to the fact that not only did Jesus die, but he also rose again from the, the dead. It's an historical fact that he rose from the dead. We have a living saviour. The resurrection is everything. And because Jesus is alive, he is able to forgive and to save you tonight if you turn to him. But can I also say, because he's alive, when he returns, he will also be judge. And if you don't know him as Savior, he will judge you. And the one question he will be asking, what have you done with his offer of salvation? We have a living Savior. Sixth lesson that, that I have learned is this, that salvation is a miracle in itself. It is the greatest gift of all. After we lost Matthew, one of the things that people said to me many, many times was that because you've gone through difficulty, because you've gone through this pain, that God's going to take and use you to do great things. And I always answered them the same way. And they never quite knew how to answer me back when I said it. But I always said to them, what if he doesn't? What if he doesn't use me to do anything much? So what if he just sustains me for the rest of my life? So I, I live to be a, an old man, 90. Actually, I'm going to aim for 100. That's my goal. What if he keeps me for, for that lifetime? What if he keeps me walking with God throughout my whole life? What if he keeps my family, my wife and my, my, my other three boys, and he keeps us walking with God? And I, I praise God that he, he has ha, ha saved my, my family and each of them are walking with him. I praise him for that. But what if he just does that? Would that not be enough? Let me tell you, that would be an incredible, incredible miracle in itself. You see, salvation is the greatest gift of all. Whatever, whatever God does with, with, with my life actually doesn't really matter because he's already given me the best. He's given me salvation, forgiveness, eternal life, hope for the future in Jesus Christ. The greatest gift of all. There's nothing else that I can ever do or I can ever receive in this life that will ever come close to that 
salvation is God's greatest gift. It's a gift that each one of us can receive. Number seven. The seventh lesson that I have learned over my lifetime is this. Is that you're loved by God more than you even understand. It's one of the things that I, I really struggled with over probably the, the, the couple of years after we were wrestling just with, with the loss of, of our son. And I, I wrestled with, with this idea of, of the love of God. Not perhaps in the way you might imagine. I, I never doubted that God loved me. But the reason I wrestled with it was this, that I couldn't understand how God could possibly love. I, I couldn't understand how God could possibly give his son as a sacrifice on the cross for me. I, I, I couldn't get my head around it. I, I was looking at things as a, as a, as a father who lost his son. I mean, up until that, that point, when I, I read of, of the gospel and I read of Jesus Christ, I always, always thought, of, thought of the cross as, as Jesus dying on the cross for me. And that is true. However, after losing Matthew, I began to look at it slightly differently. And I always looked at the cross through the eyes of, of the Father. And I couldn't get my head around it. How could a father put a son on the cross? Because when I read the Bible, maybe I read it, and maybe I should have seen this before this, but I began to read it and discovered that actually almost every time you read of the cross, it's the Father who gives the Son. It's God who gives Jesus over to the cross. I mean, for God so loved the world that he gave his Son. That, that, that the verse that we, I'm sure, all know tonight, John 3, 16. It's the Father who gives his Son. And I, 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 as the time I read, it became more and more clear, the Father's giving his son here. I thought, I couldn't do it. I, I would do anything tonight to go back and to change time and to have my son here. I'd do anything. I mean, after we lost Matthew, a number of people came to faith, a number of young people came to faith. And I remember somebody saying to me one time, he said, look, that, that must make it a wee bit better for you. The fact that people have come to faith. And I, rightly or wrongly, I said to them, it doesn't make it better. I, I'm glad they've come to faith. But you know what? I want my son back. I, I would swap that for my son back. And don't take this the wrong way, but I, I remember saying at the time, they could go to hell. I have my son back. That, that's, that's, that's the emotion of a father talking. That's why I couldn't understand the love of God. Because the love of God is, is different. My, my, my love as a father is, is faulty. Sinful. My, my love is selfish. Whereas God's love is perfect. It's divine. It's unconditional. It's him loving the, the unlovable. It's him loving me despite my, my feeling and my struggling and my lack of understanding. And I say really wrestled with trying to get my head around the love of God. And I, I came to this conclusion. The conclusion was that I cannot fully grasp the love of God. I know enough about it so that I can be saved. I know enough about what he's done for me so that I can have my sins forgiven. I can trust him and, and rejoice in, in him as Savior and Lord of my life. But I really don't understand the love of God. And I say the same to you tonight. No matter how much you, you, you think you understand the love of God, there is so much more that you do not understand. His love is more vast than you can imagine. If you were to take all the love of all the fathers 
in this world and to, to pull it all together and compare it to the love of God the Father, it would be like a water drop compared to the ocean of the love of God. His love, a divine love that was prepared to put his son on the cross, to put his wrath upon his son, who was innocent, who was perfect, in your place and my place, so that we could be forgiven. That love, that saving love, is beyond our comprehension. And yet, praise God tonight, we know enough about it. We have his word. We know enough that we can be saved. We can be forgiven. We can know him as Savior and Lord of our lives. And so if you're here tonight and as you reflect upon the gospel and the Lord Jesus Christ, perhaps as you look at your life and you're struggling and perhaps even doubting that you can be loved, can I say you are loved? With a love you can't even understand beyond your comprehension. And yet God loves you. He loved you enough to send Jesus to the cross in your place. And Jesus willingly went and died and he rose again for the forgiveness of your sins. I said this is the greatest gift of all. And Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. Not by works. So that no one can boast. You see. But as I share those seven lessons that I have I've learned throughout my life. And I guess on, on reflection. Many of them have been learned through some of the, the, the toughest years of my life I want to point you to Jesus Christ as Savior because he is the only reason that I, I stand here today because of the work that he's done in, in my life and my heart and as I point you to him this year I want you to remind you that when the Bible talks about this, this gift of salvation we need to recognize that because it's a gift, it means that we have to respond to it. There has to be a response. And that, that, that response involves accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Acknowledging that you have done wrong things. That you're not perfect. That you struggle. And if we're completely honest, I mean, all, all of us in, in our life have... People could see into our, our thoughts and our, our actions all of the time. We, we see uh, all of the struggles that we do. We, we wouldn't want them to, to know any of it. And yet God who knows it all sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. I say, so that offer of salvation is yours, but it requires a response. And my prayer is that you accept Christ a savior you see to do nothing is to reject to do nothing to put it off for another day is to to reject that offer of salvation with any gift it's very simple to acknowledge that you need Acknowledge Christ as Savior and just say thank you to Him for, for saving you. As you turn from your sin in repentance, you turn to Jesus, and in turning to Him, you will find that He will cleanse you, He will forgive you, He will give you eternal life. That's my prayer for you. I, I said at the, the very beginning that salvation is a simple faith in Christ alone and my prayer is that you would know him as Savior 
and Lord of your life tonight. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your love towards us. We thank you for all that Jesus has done for us on the cross. We thank you that as he, he died there, he uttered those words, it is finished. Nothing needs more needs to be added to it. That in simple faith we can receive this offer of salvation, this gift of salvation. Lord, I pray tonight for each one here. We pray that you would do a work of grace tonight. For any that don't know you as Savior, you would, they would just turn to you tonight, trusting you for salvation. For any that have maybe grown cold or struggling with, with some of the, the pressures of life, pray you restore them unto yourself tonight by your grace. Lord, for any that just need that encouragement, a reminder of the assurance of salvation, that they would or just be built up in you tonight. We pray all in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's all pray. Father, we thank you for this precious time here this evening. We, Father, thank you for the real sense of your presence with us, our Father, and you speaking into our hearts and lives. We thank you for Colin. Thank you, Father, for his testimony uh, shared here this evening. Thank you, Father, for the honesty. But Father, thank you for your grace. Your grace that has saved him, but your grace that is sustaining him. Sustaining him and Suzanne, the family. Father, we pray that they'll continue to know your sustaining grace. Because your grace is sufficient, our Father, for all of our troubles, as we're told in your word. But Father, we know, we believe, Lord, you're speaking to hearts tonight. We know, Father, that for those of us who are saved, that you've been blessing us and encouraging us, challenging us. And Father, we believe as well this evening for those unsaved, that Lord God, that as I've heard this evening of the, the blessed hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that our Father, our prayer is tonight that they'll come to know the Saviour, put their trust in him. We thank you, Father, that he is everything, that he is the one who is the uh, the giver of eternal life. Father, our prayer tonight is that this will be the very night when there'll be those, Lord, whether here in the car park or watching online, that, Lord God, tonight, Lord, that they will uh, they will seek forgiveness for their sins, that they will surrender their lives unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, experience your wonderful joy of salvation. So, Father, bless the words of testimony. Bless the ministry of song. We thank you, Father, for the appropriateness of it, how it is all dovetailed together. And Lord, we just praise you, Lord God, that for those of us who are saved, that, Lord God, that we can look forward knowing that one day we will be with Jesus. We know that so many things here on earth, they don't make sense. But one day when we behold him face to face, that all indeed will make sense. Thank you that you're perfect. You do all things perfectly. And we can trust in you through everything in life. So, Father, accept our thanks for this time. Part us with your blessing, and we pray it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. We do want to thank Colin uh, for his words of testimony. I know he's been through so much and not easy, but yet we know the Lord has given great help, and we trust that the Lord uh, will continue to bless Colin and his wife Suzanne and the family and continue to pour in his grace upon them. If something... Uh, has been said this evening or um, there's something you would like to talk to us about afterwards um, please do wait behind I know we'll be getting the cars all going out now in a moment one after the other but if you want to stay we'll just pull your car over to the side and Colin will be about I'll be about as well if you want to come and speak to us uh, please do uh, do that concerned about eternity concerned about your own salvation uh, we please do uh, remain afterwards and we'll be only too glad to share with you but thank you for coming thank you for attending these drive and say this is the last of the season and uh, uh, God willing in September time we'll be going back to uh, our Sunday evening service in the church hall each Sunday evening but we thank you for your support over these summer months and God willing uh, in the future we will be able to have uh, drive uh, just uh, remain in your car until the office bears uh, give you the, the, the word that you can leave so that we have no accidents or anything as you go this evening but thank you to the, the worship group for leading us in our worship thank you for all who have helped and done all the work for this for the office bears we want to thank JB Towers as well for the loan of their lorry each time that's a tremendous help for us and uh, we do thank them for that as well but safe home and say if you do want to talk to us please don't be afraid to remain behind thank you and god bless